Hey guys, Steve here. In my next project, I'm gonna be setting up a web server from inside my home. But before I do that, I'm gonna show you how you can set up your router so you can actually access that web page from anywhere in the world as long as you have an internet connection. Normally your router acts as a firewall to keep network traffic off your home network. But in order to run a web server, we need to allow certain ports to be able to push network traffic to specific computers. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you can set up your router to give your web server a static IP address. And then I'm gonna show you how you can set up a specific port to push network traffic to that specific IP address. Secondly, I'm gonna show you a free service I use. It's called noip.com. And this will actually give your web server an easy to remember web address. Let's go ahead and we'll log into our router. I have a Netgear router, so I can type it routerlogin.net and my network page will show up. If you're using another brand, the generic IP address for those routers are 192.168.1.1. So once you log in, uh, yours will be set up differently because you'll probably have a different router. But if I go through here on the side, you'll see my LAN setup. When I click there, um, this page will show up and it currently shows that I'm using my router as a DHCP server. That means when any computer logs into my home network, this router will give it an IP address so it can communicate on the network. And I usually set up mine to start at 50 and go to 100. That means I can set up 50 different devices on my home network without any problem. Under the address reservation is where you can set up a static IP address for a specific computer. So these are current ones that I have set up. As you can see, they are all numbered under 50. That way you don't want them to interfere with your other router addresses. So if you want to add a new one, go ahead and click add. And on this page, you can see that these are all the devices that are currently on my network. Some of them have device names, some of them don't. Well, this Raspberry Pi TiVo, this is my web server that I'm going to set up right now. If we go ahead and we click on this little number here and go down to the IP address, we can assign this to whatever we want. And then we can uh, name it whatever we want so that we can identify it on the network. So I'm going to change this to 46 because that's the one I want for this. And I'm going to go ahead and hit add. As you can see, it shows up in this new list of uh, addresses that are reserved. And we need to click apply. And in about 30 seconds, then that static IP address will be assigned to that Raspberry Pi. So easy enough, that is how you set up a static IP address on the router. Go ahead and set up port forwarding. If you just go back on the side, you'll see another section that will probably say port forwarding or port triggering. Go ahead and click on that. At the very top, we're gonna to set up port forwarding and you can set up any service that you want. We'll just go ahead and we'll add a custom service here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this top one, this Raspberry Pi TiVo. This is the one that we're gonna be setting up with the port forwarding. You can call it whatever you want. We're just gonna call it web server. And at the top here, we're gonna set up our starting port and our ending port. The only port that we're gonna be setting up is 5,000. So we're gonna enter 5,000 for both of those and then we'll hit apply. Now you can see that our web server port 5000 to 5000 is now attached to this IP address. So let's head over to noip.com. I've already created an account. Like I said, this is a free service. So go ahead, create your free account and I'm log in and we'll go to manage our account. On the dashboard page, we currently have no host name set up. So let's go ahead and we'll click on that area and we're gonna create a new host name. So we can choose a host name, whatever we want, as long as it's not already chose by somebody else. So let's just type this my web server test and you can change it to any domain i like this hop2.org but you can choose any of these ones that are listed under this ip version 4 address this will be the address that the, this website has determined to be your web address we go ahead and we'll copy that because right here under type a this will just redirect our my web server test.hop2.org to this address but since we need to program it to a specific port use web redirect. So we'll redirect to an IP address on a specific port. So under this URL, we'll type our IP address with a colon and port 5000. Then we can go ahead and hit create host. Now with our host name created, if we give the system a minute to update and we copy this address into our web browser, you'll see that we are redirected to our web server that we have running inside of our house. So this page right here is what I currently have running. So the reason you use a service like noip.com is because over time your internet provider will give you a different IP address. So by using a service like this, anytime your IP address changes, noip.com will automatically adjust it for you. So whenever you type your web address, your mywebservertest.hop2.org, will redirect to the new IP address. Now it's able to do so because you should be running a piece of software on your computer and that is provided by noip.com. This program will run in the background of your computer and anytime there is an IP change from your service provider, it will automatically update to the noip.com website. Now you don't actually need to run that piece of software on your web server, you can run it on any computer that you have on your network. I just put it on my normal computer that I use every day 
That way the program is always running. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at that program and I'll show you how to set it up. We head back over to the NoIP dashboard um, right under the active host where we started. If you scroll down, you'll see that there is the dynamic update client for Mac or there should be one for PC too. We'll go ahead and click the download button. Right at the very top, you can download the client. If you watch the video, she'll actually have a video of showing you how to download and set up the program so I don't have to repeat everything. So I got my client running right here. If I go up to my preferences and double click the padlock. Now on this page, the first thing we wanna check is to automatically start on login. So make sure this checkbox is marked. Next, we will go up to host and we will refresh the host and make sure that this checkbox is marked. Then anytime there is an IP change, this host will be updated online. And that is all you need to do for this program. So I hope you guys found this video interesting. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below and make sure you check the video description for anything I may add after I post this video. And be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. I will have more computer videos coming out, including some that involve the Raspberry Pi and home automation. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.